we've been talking about now are the microtubules. So remember microtubules is another one of these filament systems that is found in the cytoskeleton. Microtubules, we've talked about how they're made, right? So with the alpha, beta, tubulin dimers coming together, polymerizing, and forming the microtubule, this hollow tube-like filament uh, that is spread throughout the cytoskeleton and can play multiple roles. One of the major roles of the microtubule is to act as a track system for motor proteins such as kinesin and dynein to walk along carrying vesicles. But another major thing that microtubules contribute to is actually helping to generate motion. So similar to actin and myosin we saw with the sarcomere and muscle contraction, now we're going to see dynein, a minus end directed motor protein, and how that interacts with microtubules and generates force. And this generation of force is going to help cause motion to occur. Now, we've seen this motion before in sperm tails, for example. That's one of the classic examples. So sperm tails, remember, generate a sine wave type of motion. So through this sine wave motion, it's actually due to the interaction between uh, microtubules and dynein, the minus end directed motor protein. So today, in today's show, we're going to be discussing just exactly how the microtubule and dyneans interact with each other in such a certain way and are arranged in a certain manner within the sperm tail to help generate this bending and generate this sine wave motion. So we're going to be looking at a few key things. Okay? In this particular episode, we're going to focus on how the microtubules are arranged and where the dyneans are. And then we will also look at how the dynein actually interacts with the microtubule. And you'll see that that system is very similar to the actin and myosin interaction that we saw before with muscle contraction. So right now we're going to look at the arrangement of the microtubules. So I've zoomed in on this picture now. And over here, this is a cartoon image of what the sperm tail looks like. So if you were to take the sperm tail, chop it in half, and now you're looking down at the tube of the sperm tail, this is what you'd be seeing. So this would be like a top side view. And what you can see is that we have this structure known as the axoneme. And in this structure, we see various microtubules arranged in different patterns. So one of the major patterns that we see right away are two singlets. Okay. So remember, a singlet is a series of 13 microtubules arranged in a circular form. So there's two pairs of singlets in the center of this axoneme structure. Then on the outside of this structure, there are nine doublets. So a doublet contains an alpha and contains an A subunit and a B subunit. The A subunit, remember, contains 13 microtubules arranged in a circle. And then coming off of that alpha is a B subunit, which is composed of 10 microtubules. So a doublet is two chains, two circular chains of microtubules linked together. One has 13 and one has 10. 13 plus 10. That's a doublet. So the A subunit has the 13, and the B subunit has 10. And so these doublets on the outside ring here, this axoneme structure, are going to be playing the major role here. It's going to be due to their interaction with the dynein, which is also pointed out here in these pitchfork-like structures coming off of one microtubule they will be walking along the neighboring microtubule and through this dynein and microtubule interaction will generate the force that ultimately propels the sperm tail and generates this bending of the sine wave motion. So continuing on then, so all of these microtubules are arranged. You have your doublets on the outer rings here and two singlets in the middle. 
Now remember, you also have to have various microtubule associated proteins. Okay, so proteins that act as spacers to keep everything spaced out so you don't have microtubules tangling up with each other. So separating the doublets from the central singlets, we have a protein, I know it's a little tough to see in light blue, is called the radial spoke. So the radial spoke is coming from the doublet to the singlet. So there's space right there. It's a radial spoke because obviously if you looked at this picture, it looks like the radial spoke of a bicycle tire. <clears throat> then you also have spacer proteins or found in between all the neighboring doublets on the outside. This is a very important protein and we call this protein Nexin. N-E-X-I-N. So Nexin is found in between neighboring doublet microtubules on this outer ring here. Okay. We're going to see that Nexin not only is helping to space the neighboring microtubule doublet, doublets from each other, but we're going to see that it's going to act as a rubber band type of system in a way and actually helps to restrict how much force is actually put on the microtubules when dynein is interacting with the microtubule to cause the generation of the force needed to propel the sperm tail. Again, this will all become clear in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> Some other key features of this picture. As you can see, that there are dyneans coming off of one set of these doublets and then they're actually going to be interacting with the neighboring microtubule. So the key thing here, and that's very important to know right now, is that the dynean motor protein, which is a minus N directed motor protein, is bound and attached to the A subunit of one of these doublets but it walks on the B subunit of the next doublet. So if you can see, if we take a look then at 1 and 2 over here, in the doublets here labeled number 1, this is the A subunit with dyneans attached and bound, but the heads of the dynean, which do the walking on the microtubule, are going to be walking and interacting with the B subunit of the second set of doublets. So again, the dynean is anchored to the A subunit of one doublet, but it walks and interacts with the neighboring B subunit. And that's how that's arranged throughout. So dyneans are coming off the A subunit, walking on the next pair of doublets, B subunit. And again, this is a minus N directed motor protein. So what we're going to see now is that once the force gets generated, so when dynein interacts with the microtubule through a cross bridge like cycle, very similar to actin and myosin, we're going to see that this generation of force is going to cause movement between neighboring microtubules.